Agile software deployments are becoming very hot and in vogue in the digital transformation space. They're meant to be a big improvement over traditional waterfall deployments. But what exactly is the difference between Agile versus waterfall? And more importantly, how do you determine which is the right path for you? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And as we're helping clients through the world with their digital transformations, we find that more often than not, software vendors are leading with an agile mindset or an agile implementation mindset. Most software vendors now have agile components and agile philosophies baked into their proposals and their implementation plans, as do the system integrators and the technical implementers of the world. However, the software deployment industry is built on a concept called waterfall, and that's a more traditional software deployment methodology that I'll describe here in a moment. But the question we often get is, what's the difference between the two? Do we really need or want Agile? Do we really need or want Waterfall? Or is there some sort of hybrid that might make sense for us? And so that's what I want to do today is talk about the difference between Agile and Waterfall and ultimately help you understand what the right path for you is, depending on what your goals and objectives are. Now, a lot of what I'm going to talk about here today is something that you can find in an ebook that I wrote recently called Lessons from 1000 Digital Transformations. And in this book, I outline 20 key lessons and key takeaways from having helped over a thousand different organizations throughout the world with their technology deployments. And we talk about Agile and Waterfall in that ebook, but there's a lot of other things we talk about beyond that that might be helpful to you. So I encourage you to use the links in the description below to download this white paper to help you through your digital transformation. Now to help understand the difference, I'm gonna dive into what Waterfall is first. Now, Waterfall is a methodology that was historically and traditionally used up until recently. It was almost exclusively used as sort of a way to deploy new technologies. And so we'll, we'll talk about that over here. So this is Waterfall over here. And what Waterfall is, is essentially it's a sequential series of steps that require you to get entirely through a phase of a project and get sign off and approval before you move on to the next phase. So what software vendors often would do is they would start with a phase called requirements gathering. So this is where they understand the, the client's business needs and what it is they're trying to accomplish and what needs to be built into the software. Then you would have the design of the software, generally speaking. And then you'd have your build phase. And then you would have your test phase. And then ultimately your go live. Now, the difference here with Waterfall that's different from Agile is that we're not moving past any one of these phases until we've finished the first phase. So for example, if you're going through a global ERP or enterprise technology rollout, you're gonna define your global requirements and define how you're gonna change your business and what you want that future state to look like before you ever start designing and building and testing software and then ultimately going live. And this has been one of the problems with Waterfall and why Waterfall has such a bad rap today is because of what ended up happening historically is that organizations oftentimes got stuck in one or more of these phases. So for example, requirements gathering for a global complex organization could sometimes take several months or over a year just to define your requirements. And you end up spending a lot of time and money here before you ever get any sort of value out of the investment in the technology. So I'm gonna come back to this point in a minute, but what Agile does is it tries to attack that vulnerability and give us an alternative to that problem or that situation. So what ultimately happens here is you will finish your requirements definition, then you sort of lock down your requirements gathering. And once you've locked that down, you've gotten sign off and approvals and moved on through the stage gate. Now you move on to the next phase. Now you start to design the software, sign off on design, go through the stage gate review here. Then you start building the software. Same thing, stage gate before you move on, then you move on to test. Stage gate, you make sure you've tested everything, you've done user acceptance testing, all that stuff. And then you go live. And as you can see, if we have disruptions along the way, it pushes everything out because everything's sequential and that's intentional. It was meant to create software that's standardized, that's well thought out, well designed, all that good stuff. But with failure rates of over 80%, enterprise technology and digital transformations needed an alternate answer to address some of the problems that were being experienced by waterfall deployments. 
So what I'll do next is I'll talk about how Agile is different than Waterfall. So this brings us to Agile. Agile is a different approach. And what I'm gonna do is just whiteboard and sketch out how Agile looks different. So to recap, Waterfall requires that we go through each of these phases sequentially before we ever get to testing and going live with new technology. Agile, on the other hand, really seeks to compress these timelines into a series of sprints that are meant to get technology out to be tested and used by end users as quickly as possible so that then we can get feedback from those end users to then come back and pivot and adjust our deployment and learn from those mistakes and from the lessons and the things that went well along the way. So instead of having sequential steps like this, you would have more sprint-based approaches. So you, it's a series of sprints that would still go through these different things, but you're doing it a lot faster and you're doing it in more bite-sized chunks. And that's an important piece of it too, is there smaller bite-sized chunks of work. And as I mentioned, the key here is really to get technology into the end user's hands as quickly as possible so they can start using the software. And if there are adjustments that need to be made or, or problems with the way it's deployed, there's a feedback loop back to the project team to then make adjustments, learn from that, and then move on to the, the later stages. So the key here is fast tech deployment, We're trying to get technology out as quickly as we can. Now, in theory, this sounds great. It sounds like this is probably going to solve the problem we had up here, which is high dollars, high time, delayed ROI, some of the challenges with waterfall. It takes a lot of time, a lot of money before you ever get business value. So Agile comes along, this whole movement comes along and says, hey, you don't need to do this. We'll come out and we'll provide a methodology that allows you to do sprints and you can have business value right away or very quickly, a lot less than it might take to go through an entire sequential process like this. That is true to some degree, but what we found is that a lot of organizations miss out on the value of waterfall by going too far down the path of Agile. And let me explain what I mean by this. When you have an Agile deployment, you're not spending the time up front to define your requirements enterprise-wide in a great amount of detail. You might focus on a small subset of your requirements, build and test the software quickly and get it out in the hands of end users to get their feedback, but you're not doing it all for the entire organization across the entire enterprise, generally speaking, as you would with Waterfall. The problem with that, as good as it might sound on the surface, is that if you're a global organization and you're trying to standardize business processes and you're trying to be very thoughtful and deliberate about what your future state operating model is going to be, you're going to end up glossing over some of the stuff here because you're going to do it in the name of Agile and getting sprints out, getting technology out as quickly as possible, getting business value as quickly as possible. So you're in a constant race to deploy stuff without necessarily having a clear vision or clear strategy that's overarching across the entire enterprise, which is why a lot of organizations go through a digital transformation in the first place is they want to get that business value. They want to be deliberate. They want to take the time to re-engineer their processes, to standardize their processes and start to act like one company. And it's very difficult to act like one company when you're doing an agile deployment, because now you're almost encouraging people to just start using technology without necessarily changing their processes and going through the, hard work and the messiness of changing your processes up front before you ever get to deploy new technologies. So for every problem that Agile helps resolve with Waterfall, I would argue that Agile creates a whole subset of new problems. And so Agile on its own is not a silver bullet. It's not going to fix your problems. There's a lot of risk with Agile deployments, but the same is true with Waterfall. There are risks with Waterfall deployments, as I mentioned here, high dollars, high time, delayed ROI. So we've got to figure out what the right balance is. And what we found is a lot of organizations will do sort of a hybrid model where they might take more of a waterfall type of approach here with requirements. And they might take the extra time up front to make sure they have their ducks in a row and a clear vision of what they want their future state to look like. But then when it comes time to design, build, and test, this is where we shift into an agile mindset and we start to deploy stuff quickly. We don't wait to build the entire enterprise-wide technology stack. We might break it down into smaller chunks and just start getting technology out there so that we can test get value and more incrementally start deploying technology. That's a great way to leverage the best of both worlds. Even though there are challenges there, you're not mitigating all the risks. That ends up being a way to balance out some of the pros and cons between these two approaches. So the question becomes, which is better, agile, waterfall, or some sort of hybrid? And the answer I often give to a lot of different questions is it depends. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish as an organization 
depends on who you are now as an organization. It depends on where you're headed with your digital transformation. I'll give you two examples. If you're a large global organization that has grown through acquisition, grown organically, you've got disparate operations throughout the world, and you're trying to use your digital transformation as a way to consolidate and standardize your business processes to start acting and functioning like one company to give you the scale you need to continue to grow, this waterfall approach or leaning more towards the waterfall approach can actually help you in that regard. Now you do have to manage these risks I talked about over here with higher investments in time and money up front, but there is definite value in these cases in leaning towards a waterfall approach. If on the other hand, you're a younger, smaller, more nimble organization, maybe it's entrepreneurial, high growth, you're moving very quickly, you haven't been around for a long time, so you don't have a lot of baggage or a lot of disparate ways of doing business, then a more agile approach is probably gonna make a lot of sense. If you're entrepreneurial and moving fast, this fits your culture, it fits your model, it fits your profile and tolerance for risk. It just matches the overall pace that you move as an organization. And then of course, there's that in-between middle ground that ends up applying to a lot of organizations. But the key here is to think of this as a sort of a spectrum. You've got two extremes. You've got agile, fully agile deployment methodologies, and you've got fully waterfall, and then there's some hybrids in the middle. So the key is to figure out who you are as an organization and which one best aligns with your needs. And ultimately, no matter what path you choose, you just need to make sure you've got strong program management and project governance, as well as risk management and risk mitigation mechanisms in place to make sure that you've managed the downside risk of whichever path you choose. So now the question becomes, how do we incorporate this concept and this decision process into our digital strategy? First and foremost, I would say before you ever start contacting software vendors and system integrators, I would challenge you to figure out where you think you fall on the spectrum first. The reason I say that is because if you go to system integrators and software vendors, chances are fairly high that you're going to get a very biased view of Agile-centric methodologies. And again, there's strength here. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Agile, but it's not a one-size-fits-all answer even though software vendors and system integrators are treating it as a one-size-fits-all answer, largely because it's a great marketing message for software vendors to be able to say that we take an agile approach, we're nimble, we're flexible, we're gonna, we're gonna fix these problems here of time, cost, and delayed ROI, you're gonna get immediate business value. But again, we're creating a whole host of another set of problems that organizations realize as they get into agile deployment. So you just wanna make sure you know upfront what direction you wanna go, and then ultimately recognize that you're the customer. You're the company that has to live with whatever deployment happens within your organization. So you want to make sure you have the right digital strategy and overall methodology that fits your business of who you are today and where you're headed in the future. So for more information about digital transformation, best practices, and digital strategies that we've seen work best for organizations throughout the world, I encourage you to download our book called Lessons from a Thousand Digital Transformations. It covers a number of tips, lessons, and best practices from having helped over a thousand organizations throughout the world through their digital transformations, including the whole Agile versus Waterfall debate, but including a number of other best practices and independent software reviews as well. So I encourage you to use the links in the description field below to download that white paper. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.